Hello, we are here with Dustin Darden running for the open Anchorage assembly seat out of West Anchorage. Good morning. Howdy. How you doing? Doing good. All right, so go ahead and just tell us a little bit about yourself. My name is Dustin Darden. I was born and raised here. I'm looking forward to the, uh, the summer coming up. We had a dark winter. It's warming up finally. I'm looking forward to going out and camping and stuff. Like I said, I've been here my whole life. I just want to, uh, want to help this community out and listen to what people have to say and listen to public testimony and whatnot. Okay, so now why are you running uh, this time around? Well, I want to see things happen. I want to see, uh, I want to see a positive change in the city. I want to see things that, uh, that are brought to my attention by my, uh, you know, if I'm elected by the um, people who live in the city, when they bring testimony forward, I want to listen to them and I want to, to make positive changes. Now, if voters choose to elect you on April 5th, what will be your top priority? My top priority is going to be maintaining uh, low taxes, looking out for the local city workers, which I am actually currently employed by the city. And also I've worked with the private sector like uh, tailored restoration. I'm, I'm a member of uh, Carpenters and IBW Local 1547, but I want to look out for workers. I want to keep taxes low and I want to cut things that we don't need in our budget. Okay, so that brings me to my next question. Looking at the budget, how can you help the Muni with some of the budget issues we're looking at right now? Well, for example, uh, the ball's in the, in the public's court right now. If they want to save money on these bond initiatives, they need to read them very closely and make the decision if we are in fact in a shortfall, do we need added expenditures to compile our debts or do we need to reduce them? And as an assembly member, I won't push to increase stuff that we don't need. We have the necessities like public safety and firefighters and roads. These are all already given costs. These additional bonds are adding into our indebtedness that is unnecessary. So we need to keep people employed we need to look out for the homeless. We need to give the cops, you know, new AR-15s. I heard there's, they need some of those, but we don't need excessive bonding. Okay, now you mentioned cuts earlier. Looking at the budget, what are some of those areas that you see right off the bat that you can make some cuts in? It's not a specific cut. What it would be would be initiatives that come forward, and it would be looking, hey, do we need this project? Hey, do we need that? It'd be listening to the public and saying, look, you guys, we don't have the money for this. We need to maintain what we have. And another thing, what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to be scared by a budget crisis and say, hey, we need to uh, increase taxes. And that, that's not what I'm for. I don't want to increase taxes. I want to keep people employed, and I want to uh, want to cut taxes. Now, while wanting to cut taxes, do, are you looking at all to diversify those taxes? Right now, property owners are carrying the full weight of taxes. Um, have you given any thought to a sales tax? Is that something you'd support? The only time I'd support a sales tax is not only just offset property taxes, but it would have to completely replace it. So that's pretty far-fetched. But if we did go to a sales tax, it would have a lot of stipulations and whatnot. But it would have to completely redo, replace property taxes. And I don't think that we need to constantly increase property taxes. And there's, a, there's an attack on the property owner right now. It's like now there's legislation going through saying, hey, we don't want you to have this many four wheelers or this many RVs on your property. I think we need to put the property back in the hands of the people who own it. So the morale is boosted in the city. Let's move on to the tax cap. Do you support the change to the way we uh, calculate the tax cap? Just to make it real plain and simple, because there's a lot of confusion out there, I'm voting yes on eight. I'm supporting the yes on eight, which would bring back the tax cap. So you do not support the change that was recently made by the assembly then? Uh, the current administration made a change that got rid of the tax cap, which gives place to, for additional uh, unfounded calculations that would occur onto the property owners. I'm for since 1983, we've had a tax system in place that has a cap, and we need to stick to that if we don't want to be taxed into oblivion like New York City or something like that. I don't like taxes. Don't like them. Moving on to public safety, uh, there's a lot of talk about needing to grow the police force. What are ways that you think we can make Anchorage a safer place to live? Okay. What I think we need to do 
is give the cops, the boots on the ground, exactly what they need. We don't need stuff and programs in this. We need, to, we need to look at our patrol officers, our detectives, our SWAT units, and say, what do you need to do your job to pursue vehicles so you're not afraid of all this backlash and whatnot? We need to give them every resource available. If they need new AR-15s, we get them some new AR-15s. But in these bond propositions, we have to have specific line items that are easy for the public to understand and read so they can vote exactly for what they need. And we need to address the uh, from Middle Eastern countries that are influencing and coming into our country, we need to address individuals that could pose a threat to our national security. And this is happening, and it is something that needs to be addressed. How do you address that? You start by, you start by speaking with your, your state house, your representatives, and all the way up to the, the presidency. We need to address, before we turn out like Brussels, we don't need that in Anchorage, Alaska. We need to have a vigilant, well-armed, Second Amendment abiding Anchorage. That in the event that there is some kind of a, of a of catastrophe or some kind of uh, something that needs to be dealt with, someone will have the protection on their side to eliminate the threat. And I'm for uh, universities having firearms and agencies that right now are not able to protect themselves when they're driving in their vehicle on the job. Anything that supersedes the Second Amendment, any rule or regulation needs to be eliminated. I believe that all law-abiding citizens responsible have the right to bear arms. Okay, and then looking at housing, the mayor has been pushing housing first. How do you help the Muni deal with Anchorage's homeless population? Well, first of all, you address these people who have tirelessly worked to already help the homeless situation. You know, churches have opened their doors when it drops below a freezing temperature that families can come and sleep in their churches. People are, people are giving up so much volunteer time at the soup kitchen at the Beans Cafe, people are doing a lot. And all we need to do is we need to continue to love these people. But to, to, but to put something in place that's saying, hey, come here, it's, a, it's, it's gonna be, uh, you're gonna be taxed on it for your property and we're gonna build this for chronic inebriates. I believe that that encourages uh, alcohol abuse and it's not something we need to do. We need to, you know, the, the phrase is simple. You, you give a man a fish, he eats for a day. You teach a man to fish, he lives for, he eats for a lifetime. We need to teach these people just basic skills. You know, give them something to do with their hands so they can work. And we really need to help the women and children and have work for, for men that are starting out or maybe they have a little handicap, but give them something to do to, to better this community. And I believe there's something we could do to make, make something that I, you and I would wanna go down and participate in because not because we're doing it out of, uh, out of obligation or, or duty, but something we actually want to do, some kind of community involvement. I don't know if it's going to be uh, a recreation area in that recreational facility where you could recreate and, and you could coexist with people who are less fortunate. By the grace of God, you know, I'm not hooked on drugs. I'm not uh, out of luck on the streets. But I believe there's a community thing, and it's a love thing. It's not a taxation thing that's going to help this. It's a love. It's a community. And that's what we need to do. We need to love them. Moving on to a different housing issue. Um, there's a shortage of housing in Anchorage, and our population is projected to grow. How do you help the Muni prepare for that? Well, you uh, get a job, you know, get an apartment, um, pay your bills, pay your bills on time. You know, don't rack up debt. I just advise, you know, young people just, just avoid debt. Try and, try and pay your debts off. Um, educate yourself and see when, you go, when you're looking to go to college, see where are you going to specifically get a job before you sign up. Because people are racking up, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt, you know, $70,000, $60,000 of student loans. Then they get out of college and don't got, got anything going. I, I uh, encourage, you know, trade schools, all kinds of stuff. But, yeah, uh, as far as housing, you know, get a house. Uh, and for building, we can build up. We can build up because we're running out of land, land in Anchorage. You know, what's going to wind up happening is Anchorage is going to fill up. I've seen it grow my whole life. People are going to spill out to uh, Wasilla. They're going to go to Girdwood. 
it's just going to branch out. Anchorage is pretty full and land that we do have. It's, it's pretty marshy or pretty expensive. So you're suggesting build up. That's the, the key to getting some more homes build here in Anchorage. Build up or uh, look for another place. Anchorage is about full. All right. And how should the Muni be regulating commercial marijuana? We're going to see this whole new industry start this summer. Well, with marijuana, I, I was in favor of, of legalizing it because I'm a plant guy. I grow plants and I eat the hemp seeds. So, you know, um, but as far as, uh, as far as ingesting it into your body, it's a carcinogen, uh, any kind of smoke substance um, that comes into your body, it's, it's detrimental to your health. So I'd, I'd let you know that. And then I'd also say um, they are, there's also legislation that people are looking for uh, putting in smoking facilities where people have cigars and whatnot. I think, I think smoke's pretty disgusting. So I wouldn't want smoke because if you're in an apartment complex or you're in this and that, smoke finds a way to get into residents. So if, if you're going to do that and harm yourself like to your own body, I don't know, maybe you need to go up to a mountaintop or something and, and do that. But it's uh, the smoke thing is just it's something that really troubles me. All right. And the Anchorage School District wants to ask voters to pay for bonds over the next six years, knowing that taxpayers will likely be paying for all of those bonds with less money coming in from the state. Is that something you support? The bonds? From the school district, yes. Uh, no, I don't support the bonds. It's like, like I was saying earlier, we don't have the money that we can spend. If we're going to spend more money, we're racking up more debt. If you want to save hundreds of thousands of dollars, don't pay for stuff that you don't have money for. I know it, it's rough. It's tough. But we got to hunker down, okay? Let's keep the teachers employed. Let's, let's keep on rolling and come up with, with creative solutions as a community to propel ourselves out of indebtedness and just free to really be a place that can be attractive to tourists to come that will want to stay here in Anchorage, some kind of organic cohesiveness to where they say, this is great. Why don't we just stay here for a few days before we head off to Seward or before we you know, go tour Mount McKinley or whatever. The tourists ought to love this place. And I have one last question for you. Okay. How would you rate the mayor's performance so far? What grade would you give him? Because you ran against him. Correct. I just, I was at his house a couple weeks ago, but I'll tell you, I'll give him an E for effort. And, you know, people might, people might have things to say about the mayor, about his tax, or there's some fundamental differences that I have you know, conceptually with the mayor and whatnot, but I consider him a friend. And as an assembly member, I'll work with him. I'll, I'll talk to the guy. I don't, I, don't have any, I don't have anything negative to say about him. And when I visit him, I found one thing. It's like, it's so much easier to work in love, whether it be with, with your legislators, with the homeless, with the teachers, with anything. It's so much easier to work in love than to work with with a chip on your shoulder. So we're a community, we all have ideas, and I, I'm glad to live here. I've lived here my whole life. You know, every, I was born about 10 pounds, you know, that was a lot of work on my mom, but I came out, now I'm about, uh, what, 100, 170, 185 right now. Um, but everything I'm con made of came from the city. You know, I like the vegetables, I like the agriculture, I, I just love the city. All right, Dustin Darden, West Anchorage, thank you for your time. Thank you.